Happy Monday. It's Nate with the weekend wrap up. I hope you all had an amazing weekend. I can tell you had a fantastic weekend, and that was Mr. Novak Djokovic winning his sixth title in Paris, defeating Daniil Medvedev after losing the first set 6-4, coming back and winning 6-3, 6-3. And this was the revenge tour. I think a lot of us wondered what kind of form Novak would be in after that heartbreaking loss at the U.S. Open at the hands of Medvedev. And he came back, showed a lot of heart, looked shaky, especially against Herbie Hercox in one set and in the very beginning of this match. But the guy just finds a way to win. Now, I found myself rooting for Novak, and I rarely root for him. I don't have anything personally against Novak. And what I realize is a lot of my feelings, how subjective they are. Why do, I, why do I tend to root against Novak Djokovic? Well, I'm a Federer fan, and I like Nadal more than I, I tend to root for, for Djokovic. But in, in the profession, being in a, having tennis as a profession, you know, we want to make sure that a lot of our views are objective. Sure, we can have people that we root for, but what I realize is that the majority of time when I'm rooting against Novak is simply because I just don't want him to break these guys' records. But objectively, we got to look at the hard facts. Is Novak Djokovic the GOAT? Right now, he is, without a doubt. All right, so let's jump into it. Let's talk about the champion a little bit, the champion Novak Djokovic and defeating Nova, or Daniel Medvedev. And, and this part, like this, this, before we get into the objective piece, let's just take a moment here. How cool is it that he gets, he gets to break these, these, uh, these records and his kids are witnessing it? And something that made me realize as well is, you know, when we look back through the 90s, early 2000s, there wasn't a lot of players that had established families that, you know, are, are at the age past 30 where they're still so relevant to where they're, they're, they're dominating the game. And, you know, what we've seen Roger and, 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 and Novak do, we just didn't see that. But times have changed now. Players are playing well into their late 30s. I think we'll see Rafa and Nole into their 40s competing. But I just thought this was super cool um, and subjectively made me lean a little bit towards Nola, just really enjoying watching him in, in his career, in the twilight of his career. But let's get into the objective piece. Let's talk about what's happening with stats. Let's talk about data. So miles, miles away are is Novak from the rest of the field. So granted, there's about 3,000 that separate him and Daniil. But what I just want you to take notice is that at number five, Andre Rublev, who's had an incredible season, kind of tailed off towards the end. Novak's nearly doubling him, right? I mean, it's it, 5,000 some odd points, nearly 5,000 some odd points separating the two. He's just had another amazing season. So moving on from just the race for Turin, we see the top 10 there with Novak leading the way. Let's jump into a stat that absolutely blew me away, staggering. And this, is, this was courtesy of Tennis.com. Djokovic has now reached at least the final 50 of the last 100 Master 1000 events, 1000 level events. So first, let's talk about a thousand level event. This is the second tier from the Grand Slams. This means that it, you're always getting the top 20 unless they're injured or maybe they're preparing for a particular Grand Slam, so they've skipped something, but you're getting the best of the best. And out of a hundred of those tournaments, Novak has been in the final of 50 of them. That's ridiculous when you start thinking about him, how long, how dominant he has been. And, you know, the, the objective piece, when you start looking at, he, he's really had Roger and Rafa at, at peaks of their prime. You know, maybe, maybe not Roger in his entire prime, but, I mean, at least when he was still very, very, very good. And he's coming out on top the vast majority of the time. So we look at the bottom. 28 of the last 50, 43 of the last 75, 54 of the last 110,000 level events. That number is just absolutely staggering. All right, so as we move forward, looking at the big three, this particular tournament broke the tie with him and Rafael Nadal. They were both at 36. Novak now looking at 37 ATP Masters 1000, and that's going to go back and forth. Once we start hitting back into the clay court season, Rafa makes his comeback. Roger significantly behind in this race. Not a whole lot he can do to catch up there. But still overall, 62, 57, 54, very, very relevant. All right, so moving on in the stat department. So this was 
several days ago, and I'll, I'll show you what the correction is here, but this is overall, right? So for seven years, seven different years, Novak has finished the year at number one. 345 weeks at number one, also the first, right? Now the most consecutive weeks, that record still belongs with Roger, but the most weeks at number one now goes to Nolan. 20 Grand Slam titles, we all know about that. He has tied with Rafa and Roger. Uh, can't wait for next year. It's just going to be so interesting between Wimbledon. We, we, know that, we know that Novak owns the Australian, but with Rafa owning the French, can he come back after the loss against Novak and Roger at Wimbledon? What will happen there? So we'll put a question mark. We don't know on the Grand Slams, but this, nope, that's no longer relevant as he's at 37 ATP Masters, so he's not tied with first one at all. He has the most 1,000 level events. And then the ATP Nido Finals, he has five. He's tied for second with Lindell and Sampras. And overall titles, he's fifth in the Open Era. So extremely impressive stuff. That is the data, right? So if we're looking at hard facts data, right now today, Novak is the greatest player currently playing and perhaps the greatest of all time. More to that in a moment. I want to just show you this. Let me get these check marks off, sorry. This struck me. I thought this was really interesting. Like it just is an insight to the mentality of Djokovic. This is so good. So you can read the rest of this, but how he finishes, grateful to bring home another tree, that's the trophy in Paris, in the woods to where this wolf sleeps. The man is a wolf, right? I mean, like it's, it's an insight to his mentality. It's, it's simply incredible what he has accomplished, and there's no denying what his accomplishments have been. But so there's a lot here where we can talk about what it means in the overall scheme of the race for the GOAT. So data says that Novak is the best of all time, and I'm, I'm not going to argue it. I'm, I'm, I'm more bored with that. I think that we just have to look at how, who, the big three as a whole, though. Would there be Novak without Roger? and without Rafa. I don't think so. I think he was forged in fire and it was those two being as dominant and as good as they are that made him find another level. They made him better. Equally to be said, the way that Rafa did with Roger earlier on in his career, Roger was absolutely dominant and he Rafa made him find another level and then later on Novak as well. I would say Novak has probably pushed Rafa uh, I think Rafa tends to say it's Roger, but if you look at their head-to-head, -head, it's, it's really in the last half decade at least, it's Novak that's been pushing the envelope. What I think we will find is that Roger is probably the most important player to ever play the game. I think who he is as an ambassador for the sport, he's, he's the hero to many across the world, and, you know, absolutely worshipped and adored. Um, but, and Rafa's, you can put him in that equation as well, but as far as data goes, we... Novak is standing alone currently. But what that means is 2022 is going to be terribly exciting as you see them all battle it out. But, uh, you know, for me personally, I've enjoyed watching this year, 2021, the year of Novak. Uh, fascinating stuff. Not just seeing him break the records, but but seeing his, his kids at the tournament, seeing him break down at the US Open. Just the human connection. And I think early on, if there was more of that, I think we would have had more fans split between him, Rafa, and Roger. You know, watching Roger cry a lot after winning the majors made, made him near and dear to a lot of people's hearts, uh, and, and same with Rafa. But I'll be rooting for the guy more than I have in the past, probably not against Roger and Rafa, but against everybody else, absolutely. But congrats to him, big-time stuff. Guys, thanks for watching today. If you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button. Share this with share it with someone that doesn't like Novak, right? Maybe we sway them a little bit. And also remember, if you never want to miss a player court video, hit subscribe and check out the comment section down there below. We have left you a link to check out our platform absolutely for free. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you next week with the weekly wrap-up.